Hey everybody, welcome back again. Today we're going to be doing some dry age beef. So we're going to turn this into this. Today on the Coco Newfoundlander. Hey everybody, welcome back again. And today what we're going to be doing is opening up this dry age strip loin. Now initially I was going to do a 28 dry age, 28 day dry age. What actually went up happening is that I need to cook a couple of briskets and I need the fridge space. So today is the 23rd of July. And as you can see, this is July 20, or sorry, July 1st. So this will be 22 days dry age, which is kind of a, you know, an odd number. Usually we do like 21 day dry age or 28 dry age. This is the Umai dry age bags. Now I've never done a dry age steak before this is a what they call a double a here in canada or a select no choice which is the lowest grade i guess in the united states it's not prime by any stretch of the imagination let's go ahead and open this guy up and see what it's all about i had this up on a rack inside of my fridge this over here Mmm, it kind of smells almost like, um, it's like salami or something like that. You know, kind of like that dried meat. I guess that's pretty normal. You can see the waxy uh, fat render. Pellicle is quite nice. I don't see any fungus, any old funky stuff on here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off this pellicle and... We'll see what we're left with on the inside. I'm going to try to obviously save as much as I can, but you know, when it comes to dry age, I think it's, uh, you know, get what you can really, right? Again, like I said, I've never done this before, so you have to bear with me. You can see some of that really nice meat down below. Trim off most of this fat cap, I would imagine. Helps to have a a really sharp knife when you're doing this, of course. What I'll do is I'll trim down this way, and then I'll turn it around and trim the other way, I think. That would be the easiest way to do it. It's almost like um, beef jerky. <laughs> it's kind of got that texture to it. It's pretty interesting. It feels super soft. Even when I'm trimming it here, it's kind of collapsing just underneath the pressure of the knife. Got some oxidized meat here from the dry. Just trim that off. It almost looks pretty good. You can really see that kind of deeper red color there. Looks really nice. I figured I'd try something different than just the average old steak. As most of you may know, because uh, I've mentioned it a few times now on the channel, I am on a keto diet for probably about the last year. And I've lost probably, well I can't say probably, I've, I've lost about 76 pounds. And meat is, of course, one of the staples in a keto diet. So you're always trying meat different ways, just to change it up a little bit. Mmm, looks really good. I'm going to go ahead and trim this side now. Trying to preserve as much as that good meat as possible. 
Use an external mic I uh, picked up on a sale on Amazon. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about the new audio. You'd like this better than just my phone because I'm shooting all this from my Pixel. And you know, I'm more than welcome to be sponsored by Google if you want. <laughs> just saying. You know, cooking meat all the time. Having all this stuff is not the cheapest thing to do, but hey, I enjoy cooking. And uh, if anybody picks up anything new from my channel, then that's amazing. See, there's a little bit of darkness going on right here. So I'm going to try to trim some more of that away. It's probably not quite necessary, but I'll do it anyway. When you're, of course, dry aging, you should keep as much the fat cap as you can while you're dry aging that protects the meat. This actually looks really good on this side. Now I just gotta trim off this edge. Yeah, it's really hard right there. Looks amazing. And I'm sure the 28 days would have been even more crazy. And a little bit of oxidization going on right here, so I'll trim that. There we go. A little bit more up here. Just trim that down. I'm not an expert knife sharpener. I know that seems kind of out of the blue, but I put it out on my Facebook page a little while ago about doing a sharpening video, and I think I will be releasing that soon. So again, pop in the comments, like, let me know if you uh, are interested in seeing that. You know, there's lots of ways to sharpen a knife, and there's lots of sharpening videos online, but hey, what's, what's the harm in releasing one more, right? There we go. That's pretty much trimmed the way that I want it. Maybe I'll get this a little bit more up here. It's a little bit of oxidization going on there. There we go. Mm. A little bit of a hanger there. This, it's very soft, very pliable, very waxy. Like, it's um, hard to describe. And the, mm, the smell is, like I said, it's almost like a beef jerky. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up into steaks. And uh, I'm going to fry them up later on this afternoon. And we'll see how they turn out. Stay tuned. Uh, these are what the steaks look like cut up and trimmed. As you can see, quite nice. I just got them coming to room temperature now. I left them in the fridge overnight in some saran. And uh, we're going to be cooking these on the Weber kettle. Just got the vortex set up with the small cone facing upwards. And uh, we're just going to be cooking these to a medium rare today. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, I've never tasted these. I cooked actually some up yesterday for some of my uh, YouTube subscribers that are visiting Newfoundland. And they said they really enjoyed it. I never had a taste test yesterday because I wanted to, you know, have a taste test on camera. So we'll see how uh, it goes after the cook is done. I'm going to put some meter probes in here. Actually, I probably don't even need them, but I'm going to stick them in anyway and cook them to about 120 and then sear them off. Come back for the taste test. All right, so we cooked them up to a very healthy 120, and then we seared them off. I'm going to go for this larger one here. I let them rest for about mm, seven or eight minutes. They feel quite tender. There we go, you can see they're quite juicy. I like them uh, much on the rare to medium rare side. Let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Mmm, very tender. A 
A little bit of that dry aged funk in there. Not bad. Mmm. I don't get that real intense beef flavor though. Maybe that's just a cut of meat or whatever the case may be. But it's still quite tasty. I'm definitely going to try this again with maybe some prime rib and see how that goes. Well, there you have it. Dry aged strip loin. Super easy. Just make sure you got the fridge space and you're not cooking a bunch of other stuff at the same time. As you can see in the background, got the old smoked north corn today. Got two briskets and a couple of uh, pork butts on. Uh, maybe I'll shoot a video on that and maybe it's going to be something different. Uh, as you can see, I am wearing my new leather apron and hopefully I'll get some production on these and possibly if I get some interest, I may be selling them as well. Anyway, folks, that uh, close up another show, another episode, whatever. Hope you get to try out some dry aged beef and get cooking.